Hello, what's up guys? How you doing? Thanks for coming to the event today, Facebook. Uh, Gothic Brilliance. What a great opportunity this is. And thank you for coming, everybody that's uh, here now. Uh, I'm trying to get the best view angle here while uh, I set this up. And uh, man, it's uh, it's been cool so far. Uh, thank you, Chrissy, for um, setting all of this up and you know coming on and talking a little bit about yourself there's actually a lot of stuff that you talked about that i didn't even know about so that's really cool and for for those of you who are really into books and reading and horror and romance and all that stuff definitely check out chrissy she's a really cool girl and i appreciate you um saying all those wonderful things and so now it's my segment and been on for a little bit now um uh, so, before um, uh, before we before I do any kind of reading, and especially my the first time ever reading one of my short stories from a while back ago, uh, I just wanted to thank everybody that all the authors and everybody who's been part of this to put this together. I just want to say thank you. So some recognition, real quick. Uh, Chrissy Moon, of course. E. C. Jarvis. Scott Hale, Weston Kincaid, Lily Lucchesi, Jenny Burke, Maria Kreps, Metamorph Publishing, and Moza Roy. Uh, thank you for sharing your time with me today and dedicating your time to the cause. Uh, this, this event is going to be going all the way to midnight, so make sure that you pop in every now and then, uh, you know, later on, because uh, on the hour there's going to be a new author coming on with their stuff giving you you know some uh, what they got going on writings they've done stuff they published you know a lot of talent on here on this event today so again thanks and of course you know I'm um, trying to uh, get out there more Wolfgang which is the, my first book I ever published so um, it's right there and maybe I'll do a, a little excerpt reading of Wolfgang as well and you saw, you'll see that one of my posts earlier, I talked about uh, the YouTube channel and, and this video right now I'll be posting on there as well. So if you have any comments, I'll read them back and I'll answer them if you want. And then you'll be part of history, right? Well, we like to think that. All right. So uh, this is actually a story that I wrote back in my college days. And... Um, when I read this story to the class at the time, they said um, it was kind of a silence afterwards. And, you know, they're like, man, is something wrong with this guy? Mind you, you know, a lot of the time that we write these stories are not necessarily the viewpoints that the author reflects through themselves. So just remember that the author is getting into character and we'll just leave it at that. So we'll leave it up to you to find out what you think about it, okay? So here we go, um, before I run out of time, okay? So this is Snowfall, a short story by F.D. Gross. The snow falls today much like it has for the past few months. It is a beautiful day, full of endless white. I see the kids outside playing in the three-foot banks of snow, throwing snowballs at each other, dodging behind snowmen. I watch them through the kitchen window full of jealousy. I wish I was out there, feeling the biting cold, the wetness of a snowball as it impacts my face. But I can't. I am confined to the house, destined to carry this baby radio, listening to the horrid beep that sounds every few seconds. Beep. 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 My mother is away at work, just like every day so I have to stay inside. It is I who tends to my dying grandmother. This morning, I asked my mother if she could hire someone instead so I could go build my snowman. She said no, and that we are family, and families take care of one another. The steady beeps bring me back to the present. I hold the intercom up to my ear. There it is the rasping of my grandmother, the heart monitor in the background, 
the sound of life clinging onto what little substance it has left. If I had friends, I would make them listen to it and be entertained by their reactions. I fantasize about what it would be like to have friends again, to talk and laugh and play and throw snowballs. So enticing. But now, it is time to check on grandmother. The stairwell to her room is cold. My hand touches the rail as I ascend the steps. It too is cold. My body shivers, but not from physical elements around me. I shiver with anticipation. I feel the door handle within my grasp. It stings my hand as I turn the knob. Metal holds the cold so well. It reminds me of me, numb to all things, immune to all things. I enter the room and like always, the stale air overwhelms me. The living dead resides here. I look at my grandmother laying there helpless, useless. Tubes travel from so many orifices of her body. I lose track of them all. She's staring off into another dimension. The way her glazed eyes reflect what I see as a plea for salvation. But what about my salvation? I say out loud to her. Nothing. No response. I nod my head in understanding. Slowly, I make my way over to the life support machines. Oxygen, fluids, bladder, stool. Yes, all lights are green. The machine says she's alive, but I know the truth. I look out the bedroom window. Icicles hang from the top of the awning, sharp and cold. I wonder how much weight it would take before they break from their frozen foundations. At the same time, I put all of my weight on the plastic tube that runs across the floor from grandmother's mouth to the oxygen tank. I wonder if the weight is enough. My question is answered from the continuous buzzing of the heart monitor. The flat line is loud. How different it sounds compared to the rest relentless three-second chirps. The oxygen tank hisses. The gas continues to dispense. I walk over to the window and look to see if the neighborhood kids are still throwing snowballs. A smile comes to my face. The intercom drops from my hand and I pick up the cordless phone on the nearby dresser. I dial. Mom? Honey? Is something the matter? Yes. I think Grandma is dead. I hear the stress in my mother's voice. Oh God. I'll be home as soon as I can. The smile never fades from my lips as I hang up the phone. There's still an hour to play before she gets home. All right. So there it is, Snowfall. Short story, quick short story for you. I uh, hope you liked it. It's a little bit dark. Um, so tell me what your thoughts are about it or not. Doesn't matter. But um, how did you like it? I hope you liked it. I still got some time. I was going to do another excerpt from Wolfgang, um, something I haven't done yet as far as the chapter readings go. And by the way, I have been doing um, live Facebook readings um, every Tuesday at 8 o'clock. But this time, I'm going to be not starting this week coming up, but um, a week from then. So uh, two Tuesdays from now, I don't know what the date is, um, but I'll be coming back on starting at 8.30 p.m. Eastern U.S. time instead of 8 o'clock. So, and we'll be continuing on with chapter 12. And if you go on, if you look at the YouTube channel and see all the different chapters that are posted there, there's an actual playlist that's an audio book. So you can actually go back and listen to them all. And... Uh, you know, hear the words through the author's voice, okay? So check that out. Maybe I'll see you every week, once a week, to hear the Wolfgang story told. So um, real quick, before I run out of time, I'm going to do another little excerpt here. I'm not going to tell you where in the book it is or what chapter it's from or anything like that. Um, 
Thank you. Chrissy Moon says, what a great story, Frank. Very well done. I thank you, Chrissy. I appreciate that. And my brother, Mike Peters, on there, he says he misses me. He always says he misses me. So I miss you too, brother. All right. So here we go. A little excerpt tidbit from the Wolfgang novel. So check it out right here, right now. Suddenly, my legs hit something solid and they buckle, sending me into an endless spin. My face strikes a hard surface and a streak of light flashes before me. I hit something again and a rib breaks. What little air I have left in my lungs cries out in pain. Eventually, my tumble into darkness comes to a rough stop. My hands break through pieces of wood and my knees scrape against an uneven floor. Coughing and choking, I can barely breathe. Not like the ice-cold river from before, but from the condensed dust swarming around my face. It lingers like a cloud full of plague with nowhere to dissipate. I feel the particles tickling the bronchi in my lung. I cough again and again. Nothing but pitch black. My body is bruised and sore, but I feel everything in it is in working order. With no possible way of creating light, I am as good as dead. I sit in silence, listening to the last of the catacomb floor falling around me. Rocks echo off one another, sand sliding along stone. Dirt hits me in the face. As I move, rubble falls off me as if I was buried alive. My lungs wheeze with each breath. Everything is cold and grainy in my hands until I come across what feels like a skull. I run my fingers along the teeth and realize some of them are sharp and pointed. Tossing it aside, I crawl through the darkness, directionless, passing what I think is a narrow opening. All of the debris around me is stacked precariously. I know the wrong kind of movement could set off an avalanche, burying me alive. I hold my breath and slide on my side like a worm wincing at the pressure on my rib. I pull myself through the small hole and my breathing becomes easier. I hear rocks grinding together and I know I have to keep moving. Something groans and a thunderous boom follows, shaking the small hole I just came through. My hand shovels through loose stone, using more muscle than intended. Loose rock tumbles down, entrapping my arm. Jarring pain shoots the course of my ribs. My teeth clench, but I let no sound escape my lips. The thundering settles behind me, and all goes quiet. The sound of moaning breaks through the dull silence. It reminds me of the aqueducts when I first entered the bowels of the ruins. I hear not one, but many, and the noise becomes louder and louder. How fitting all this is trapped among the dead like a piece of meat. There is a flickering light in the distance, not yellow and orange like flames of fire, but white. Hope ignites my veins. Diana, I call out, reaching with my free hand, realizing what I've just done. My voice echoes off the rocks like a man fallen down a well. The undead moans intensify. I pull at my arms to break free, but it is stuck fast. Come on, I say to myself, pushing rocks aside and kicking with my leg. Suddenly the light comes to me, as if listening to my thoughts swirling before my face, allowing me to see better. I keep pulling. Inches from my face, the head of a lecher snaps its mouth at me, teeth rubbing together, sinewy tendons exposed. It cannot move any other part of its body, Worms wiggle from its hollow nose and its film-covered eyes roll around without purpose. It makes hissing sounds with its mouth. I strain my neck to look. To look ahead of me. There are more of them, trapped and stuck like this, buried under rubble, their bodies arrested. They see me and moan uncontrollably. I have been buried alive. So there we go, a little excerpt taste of Wolfgang. I hope you liked it. And now back to the postings on Facebook, and this will be the end of my Facebook live feed. So thank you again for coming. Check me out every Tuesday at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time. 
I'll be doing new chapters, live readings. You can interact, say hi, tell me where you're from. And before we go, if you have a chance, post on there now uh, where you're from, what part of the world you're, you're chiming in from, okay? So again, thank you to all the authors who have, that are, have come on here, which is Chrissy, and then all the ones that are yet to come. I believe EC Jarvis is next, followed by Scott, and so on and so on. The list is on the page. You'll be able to see who's up next. Um, thank you again for everybody participating, and I'll see you at the live readings, okay? Thanks. Bye.